Hello friends, welcome to Mid-Morning Manna. Lonnie Mattingly here on behalf of the ministry and, and evangelism and reaching the world for Jesus Christ. That's our goal, that's our purpose, that's our heartbeat, and I hope it's yours as well. But in order for that to happen, we're going to have to be people of revival. We're going to have to have revival in our hearts and in our lives if we're going to keep going forward for God. You know, it's so easy to just get used to the routine, go through the motions, and maybe even a few emails emotions along the way. But the truth is, we need to have a heart that's on fire for God. How to have personal revival. And all of us need on occasion to stop and think and realize where we've kind of gotten cold hearted and have a little bit of a revival in our heart. And I want to challenge you with that this week. By the way, today is Wednesday. As you're watching this broadcast, if you're watching it on the day that it was intended to be sent out, this is uh, number three uh, for this week. And the title for this week is How to Have Personal Revival. How to have personal revival. And I mentioned earlier, I mentioned on Monday, yes, we're always wishing that we could have a revival in the world. And uh, we wish we could have uh, a revival in America. And we wish our churches would have revival. And how would, there are some people that just need to get revival. And then um, I challenge you to go look in the mirror and point your finger right there at that person and say, you need revival and uh, get that thing going in your heart, in your life. And uh, we talk about ha uh, how to have a personal revival. Uh, I said on Monday, we need to spend some quantity time with God, not just quality time. You know, I can read John 3, 16, thank God for it, say, well, that was a, a wonderful experience uh, or what any other verse that, of your choosing. But spending some quantity time with God, spending some time in God's word, reading the Bible, meditating on it, applying it to our life, asking God how we can implement it in our life to be used of him in ever greater ways. So spend some quantity time with God. Then number two, do something for the first time or for the first time in a long time to stir you up, to get you back to some of the basics and uh, start something new, uh, make it fresh, uh, be something you can get excited about, something you can give yourself to, something you can give give financially to, maybe some, spending some money out of your own pocket to try to reach somebody or, or purchase some needed ministry material or to get a new Bible and start fresh and do something for the first time or something that you haven't done in a long time. And uh, the Bible talks about many, many new things. And now today we come to this Wednesday edition. And I want you to think, as you think about how to have a, a personal revival, I want you to think of this. Number three is to clear up the past. Clear up the past. You say, what do you mean clear up the past? Well, I'm going to give you about three quick things here. I hope you'll stay tuned for them. And the first one's found in uh, 1 John, and that is, number one, confess your sins rather than covering them. Instead of trying to cover your sins, why not just confess your sins and allow God to use you or to get, a, get that clean slate? He said, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And in 1 John chapter number one and uh, verses three and four, it says that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son, Jesus Christ. These things write we unto you that your joy may be full. You know, when you know that you've really come clean with God and you've confessed your sin and, uh, and you've asked him to give you that power and strength to overcome that sin and you're believing him and you're gaining that victory, I'm telling you, there's just some joy in that matter as well. First John 1 John 1.9 said, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28.13 says, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Now, I don't mean that you that uh, every time you stump your toe and think a bad thought, you have to get up before the church and make some kind of public confession. I'm not talking about confessing your sins to everybody in the world. I'm talking about you and God. Get alone with God and pour out your heart and confess to God what your sins are. Now, if there is restitution that needs to be made, that's my third point that I have here, uh, or the, the next one 
here. That's number two, actually. Uh, but the number two is to make restitution. If it's something that you've done, something that you've taken, something that you, where you have led someone astray, then you need to work to try to make restitution. Try to take that wrong and make it right. In Exodus chapter 22 and verse number five, Exodus 22 verse five, the Bible says this, if a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten and shall put his beast and shall feed in another man's field of the best of his own field uh, and of the best of his own vineyard, shall he make restitution. God said, if you've taken advantage of somebody unfairly, you, you want to have revival in your heart. And at the same time, you're trying to get it over on people. You're trying to one up them and, and that kind of thing. We, we got a little thing. We, we've been attending a Shawnee Baptist uh, a number of times. And uh, this coming Sunday is plus one. We're trying to get one more person in there. Everybody try to get one more. And uh, I thought that was kind of an interesting idea, an interesting thought. And But listen, if you have failed to do the thing that God has called you to do and has told you to do, why not make that extra effort to do it? And if you've, if you've done something bad in somebody's life, if you've taken advantage of them, and the illustration that he gave here in Exodus 22, 5 is you took your cattle over to your neighbor's farm and let them eat out of his field instead of eating your from your own uh, crop. And uh, he said, if that's what you've done, then you need to make restitution. You need to make that right. You need to go out and do a big harvest in your field and maybe put a little extra on there and take it over to your neighbor and apologize and ask them to forgive you and uh, get that thing right. And then uh, the third thing that I want you to think about, I said, number one, you need to confess your sins rather than covering them. Then you need to make restitution where it's possible. And then number number C or three is to forgive. Learn to forgive. Remember in the model prayer where the Lord said, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We, you know, we always expect God's going to be right there and he's just going to forgive us just like that for everything. And yet somehow we have a right to hold on to a grudge, to carry bitterness and hang anger or hatred towards somebody else or the get even spirit. You know, don't, don't let, don't let the devil get an upper hand in that thing. Number one, maybe somebody has done you wrong and maybe you never will make them your best friend, but at least you could forgive them and go forward and and continue with your life for Christ. Don't let that thing ride on your shoulders and hold you down and keep you from accomplishing all that God could use you to accomplish. You want to have a personal revival in your life? Boy, that's so important. Clear up the past, make restitution, and forgive. Forgive. Learn to be a forgiver. We, you want to be God-like? Forgive. And God so loved the world that he gave so that he could forgive us our debts and our sins. And so as he has forgiven you, learn to forgive others. Let God give you that joy. Let him use you for his honor and glory. We're going to pray and we'll go off here today. Heavenly Father, thank you for those who've listened today. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'd expand this ministry to touch lives on a daily basis for just a six, eight, ten minute time uh, to just give some motivation for having victory in our Christian life. Father, we give you the praise for it, and we love you, and I pray you will help us to be a revival people. I need revival, and your people need revival. God, help us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.